Okay, well let's get into it there. Childrones. Major differences between the annelid worms and the mollusks. So they both have a body cavity, which is important. But there is one major difference with the way their bodies are structured. And that difference would be that the camera is crooked. Okay, okay, that looks better. And that main difference would be that the annelid worms, unlike the mollusks here, have segments in their body. Just like members of the arthropod phylum, they all got segments, 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 segments. No time, no time, no time, no time. Members of phylum, that's all right, arthropoda. Members of phylum arthropoda are highly evolved from blanks and blanks. These would be the two from the, the bell work. Forgot to do the hand thing. Annelids and the other one which is mollusks. Mollusks. So the uh, arthropods, they're a lot different from the annelids and mollusks. They began life back in the day as tiny aquatic insects, tiny aquatic insects. They later blanked the blank. They, yes, they colonized, they colonized that there, you know, where we live now, where we live now, the land, they colonized the land. Colonized the land even more than phylum blank, the phylum that blanks belong to, than phylum, I messed it up. Hold on. Arthropods are the most successful group of organisms on the land. So you're going to write that uh, twice. Just not capital because it's in the middle of a sentence. It's, we're, come on, real life Patterson, get your head in the game. They colonize the land and uh, they're more successful even than phylum blank the phylum that blanks belong to even more successful than phylum chordator yep with that sweet note accord which is the phylum that who belongs to we belong to humans there are over blank species classified give a number no, the bigger number the, the big the ridiculously large number not quite that big that number got crazy this number is a little bit now i'm not sure if you're saying anything or not because i'm not really in here but here's the number nine hundred thousand remember mollusks fifty thousand nine hundred thousand remember mollusks fifty thousand nine hundred thousand that's many species now uh, one of the ways they're successful is because of that biodiversity they've got a large variety living on the planet which makes them very very successful yes blanks are successful because of their many blanks we're talking today about arthropods and they're so successful because of their many traits that give you an advantage what do we call a trait that gives you an advantage yes those would be adaptations adaptations these also set them apart from all other animal the group that's under kingdom phyla phyla arthropods were the first to evolve blanked blankets like these <laughs> Yes, they have jointed appendages. Jointed appendages. They were the first things they invented having, you know, hinges. Hinges for doing stuff and things and words. They added these to the blank, which is our word for body cavity. Yes, to the coelum. Added these to the coelum and blanket bodies of the blanks. Blanket bodies, so it's like in pieces, that's right. The se segmented bodies of the, yes, the worms with the segments. Annelids of the annelids. The wand was giving me fits, so I grabbed his mouse. So I added that to the segmented body of the animals. The body of the arthropod is divided into three main segments. Mm -hmm. Three main segments. There is the head, right? Which, you know, here's grasshopper. There's head, 
Oh yes, you can see head of grasshoppers as she is head. She's party. Also, and it, it, the, the the middle part, which is the chest part, that is called the thorax. So there's thorax usually has all the legs and whatnot, and the bottom part, which is the belly and whatnot, that would be the abdomen. The abdomen. Those are the three main body segments. In some members, such as blanks and blanks that we're going to dissect very soon, like tomorrow soon. It's like spiders, it's a spider. And also in crayfish, the blank and the blank are joined into one blanketer blank. The head and the thorax. They're combined to form one blanket o blank ax. Use your science words. Cephalothorax. Cephalothorax. So you can see you got the head of the crayfish, the thorax of the crayfish. All of that is combined to form one delicious cephalothorax. Looks a good. Looks a very good, I believe. So that's the cephalothorax that the crayfish have. Arthropods also have a unique blanket eye. It's a compound eye because it's made up of hundreds of thousands of little micro baby eyes. This eye is compounded as thousands of mini eyes. Blanks are not quite as clear. This is what we see. It's called the image. Images are not quite as clear as our eye. However, the blank eye, the the compound eye does offer a much blanker field of blank. Yes, a wider field of vision. Wider field of vision. While also allowing arthropods to see blank much blanker than we do. They can see like and and motion. They can see motion much, much blanker than we do. Much faster than we do, right? So think of when you're swatting at a fly, they actually see your hand move before you see your hand move. I just want you to think about it. Let's let that sink in. They see you move before you see you move. And I feel like I see me move right when I'm moving, but they saw it before I did. So sometimes like they fly away before you even move. Yeah, that's because you did move and they saw it before. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. Arthropods, they're terrifying. So you get a wider field of vision. They see motion much faster. Additionally, many insects will have a nearby simple, not a complex like ours, but have a simple eye on the sides of their head so they can see like this way. And that way would be horizontally. Yes, horizontally. Which is, yeah, they have lots of eyes. Another key feature of being an arthropod is the development of the blanco blank on their blank development of the exoskeleton yes the exoskeleton on the outside this structure is much tougher than the blank blank shell of mollusks that we talked about yesterday what's that chemical it's made out of yes calcium carbonate so they've got an exoskeleton that's much tougher than the calcium carbonate shell because it's primarily composed of a chemical called chitin. Chitin, that's how this is pronounced. Chitin. The same substance that makes up the cell wall of the, not plants, the fungi, the fungi, like mushrooms and stuff like that. Mushrooms, stuff like that. Not many blanks have the ability to grow, not many of these exoskeletons have the ability to grow as our blanco blanketins do, right? Because they're on the inside, so they're not exo, they are endoskeletons. So our endoskeletons grow, exoskeletons, they tend not to do that. Therefore, as the arthropods get bigger, it's grow, as the arthropods grow, they have to like shed their skeleton and grow a new one. They have to molt. It's called molting. They have to molt. During blanking, yes, molting, during molting, the arthropods discard their exoskeleton, and then they produce a new one. 
Some do not blank and a blank at all. This is a word for like it kind of oozes out of their skin. That's, that's what the exoskeleton does. It secretes some. Arthropods do not secrete an on the outside skeleton. Some do not excrete an exoskeleton at all. For example, blank blanks use the blank of a deceased blank for protection. Some of you have had these as pets. We're talking about Hermit the Crab. Different from Kermit the Frog. It's a funny I think I'm funny. I think, I think I'm funny. So the Hermit Crabs, they don't secrete an exoskeleton at all. Instead they use the, yeah, they use the shell from deceased who? That we talked about yesterday. Oh, come on, really? I'm in the middle of doing stuff. You can just leave me alone for like four hours. There. We use the deceased shell of deceased mollusks for protection. Arthropods have extremely strong blank blank. It's the same kind of blank that we have. They have what's called striated muscle. Striated meaning stripes, which attaches to the blanco blanketin. Yes, it's called skeletal muscle for a reason because it attaches to the exoskeleton. Striated muscle which attaches to the exoskeleton enables them to perform incredible feats. Ah, feats. There are three main clades of arthropods. You have the insects, mm -hmm, which has several classes. You have the arachnids, which is class arachnida. Uh-huh. And you also have crustaceans, which imaginatively is class crustacea. If you have questions, ask who's ever in charge of you in the room. Crustacea, that's what we're going to start dissecting tomorrow. Starting with my friend and yours, Capitone Crayfish. Hold on while I get the lights. Virtual Patterson, get the lights. Yes, moose and linen squirrel, tomorrow we're doing dissection, which means right here, right now, you need to be ready to dissection. Start filling in that pre-lab as we go uh, through it. Magic pen. So we have the crayfish, you've got the cephalothorax, the gills will be in that area. You have the abdomen, you've got antennules, which are short, antennae, which are long. Chilipeds are for defense, walking legs obviously for walking, and swimmerettes, you guessed it, for swimming. Make sure that you look at the external anatomy. The story of crayfish and the story of this phylum is really about the appendages rather than anything else. So, when you first get the crayfish, it'll look like this. You've got your rostrum is the top, cephalothorax hanging out right in there. Here it is, dorsal view. This is what it'll look like on the back. This is the side that you're going to be cutting. And so to make this cut, you're going to use not the scalpel at all, just the scissors. What you're going to do is you'll slip the scissors up underneath the carapace right in here. And you're just going to make that cut in this direction up to here. You'll see a crook here. You're going to go past that. So you go all the way up here. Then you make the letter I, right? You may have to make another cut down here, but you probably shouldn't need to. And then just peel it open. When you peel it open, you will see the beauty and majesty of the crayfish body. You'll make the same cut down the abdominal to take that off. And then you'll see the internal organs, which as you can see, kind of looks like a pile of goo. Remember, it's scissors, not scalpel. You don't need the scalpel really at all today. And if you get in there and you're lucky, you'll see the stomach, which is up where you'd think the harder brain would be. The brain's stuffed way down in the bottom, these little like diskies. Those are its green glands, which are sort of like a kidney. You'll see a bunch of muscles. You'll see the gills on either side attached to the legs. Back here is the abdomen, that's the tail meat, and this line running right down it like that, that would be my friend and yours, the intestine for dissolving food. So here's another view where you can really see all the parts on the inside. The heart is up towards the back. So here is the head is over here. Here's the stomach again that I was showing you a second ago, the stomach, right? Here's your digestive glands called the green glands because they're green-ish. 
the gills, here they are attached to the legs. And if you're really lucky in the back, remember, tail is this way, so we're getting written towards the back of it here. We're not, toward, we're not anterior, we're getting towards the posterior end. The tail will be up on the top. If you don't see it, it could potentially be up inside the carapace. So check the carapace that you just cut, because it could be in there as well. On the back, you've got the tail muscles, you've got the intestine, like I was saying. Notice on the other picture is white, and now it's brownish blackish. This one is full of poop, or well, the food that is being turned into poop as all its nutrients are being sucked out, and so that's what it looks like. Uh, this is the part you eat, that part you don't want to eat. So if you're, you know, crawdadding it up, make sure you take that intestine out before you eat the tail meat, because that's just gross otherwise. Those are pretty much all the things you need to know about the crayfish to be ready to dissect. Remember, again, scissors, not scalpel. Uh, there's a lot of cool features to the crayfish, so you should enjoy it. But remember, it'll be a photo finish, so you'll come in. No quiz on Friday. I know. Don't mutiny. You can survive it. You'll just come in. You'll pound out the crayfish dissection, and then we'll go home and have the weekend. Thank you for watching, everyone. If you have questions, the things.